All right, everyone, I have a very special guest. We're going to get into some really good conversation. You know, we spoke so much over the years about physical medicine. A lot of you have asked questions about nutrition, asked questions about environmental medicine, asked questions about really the tangible stuff you can see. And then I've had a lot of conversations about the stuff you can't see, the energetics, the spiritual, the conscious. Today, we're going to mix both. In the middle of the Venn diagram, we're going to meet with my guy, Dr. Cameron Martin. He's a spiritual coach, quantum healing hypnosis practitioner, and conscious leadership expert. We were just talking about some cool stuff uh, off camera about conscious leadership. He's doing some really good talks in the future of the world and leadership in many different businesses. His life's mission is to support spirituality, awaken humans, light workers, truth seekers, and conscious leaders to finally discover their soul's purpose. And that's all we want, right? We want to remember why are we here and how can we fulfill and embody our soul's purpose and live fully aligned with higher self so you can experience a life of clarity, passion, and fulfillment. Welcome to the show, my man. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Good bio? Yeah, good. Good intro? <laughs> Sounds great. We, we, you know, I really wanted to... to to give people a taste of what you're doing. That's perfect. Just and that and that I mean that was so anyway. Look, it's like 30 words to describe me though. Mm, yeah, I that's know. It's still really limited. It's still really limited, <laughs> but words are limiting anyway, right? That's true. Yeah. So I, I, I look, I have a lot of questions about your work. We I sort of just got a little taste before mm. we got uh, on air, but something that I, I get a lot of questions about from people, and they always wonder this is, okay, I have a physical disease. Can a physical disease be the manifestation of a spiritual fracture, malfunction, something going on upstream? So yes, <laughs> my response is how could it not? Because uh, what I understand and work with my clients and actually just the way I see the world is that everything is consciousness. We are vibration, we're vibrational beings. And our consciousness creates the body. So if there's something that's happening physically in your body, like disease, dis-ease, right? Something that isn't uh, of flow, we'll say, it'll manifest physically to show you something about your consciousness. For example, uh, I'm thinking about clients that I've worked with. If they have a tumor on their lung or mm -hmm. they're dealing with lung cancer, at some level, there is a feeling strangled or not being able to breathe, or not being able to maybe express. This is sort of, lung is connected to the throat chakra. Um, and so, because I haven't paid attention to this for all these years, something physically manifests so that I can see it and make a shift. Um, similarly, if I have back pain or issues of the back or the low back, for example, this is something of the past that hasn't really been resolved. Something on the right side, an issue with my right hand, for example, this is the masculine side of the body, the hand creation doing. Maybe I'm not feeling like I'm able to create or something to that effect. And so, yes, fundamentally, all disease, all conditions, all issues come from something in consciousness first. And then that vibration creates emotions that can get trapped in the body or whatever and create that thing for you to see, ah, there's something I need to know. A lot of people think that disease or like if I'm sick or something like that is like um, random, but it's not. <laughs> and it's also not even, it's not the end of all things. It's a message from your body. Your body is trying to tell you something. Mm. It's for you to hear it to do something about it. Hmm. Uh, what, what a big surprise, right? The body is talking to us. The body wants to heal. Why do we feel so disconnected from our body then that we don't even know what these signals are saying? How can we even know, right? Because mm -hmm. you know, we look at something like a pain in the lower back. Oh, that must be because I lifted too much at the gym. Which but it doesn't go away. You could have you could in have. that moment. But 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 why is our consciousness not going to the to the oh well I might am I carrying something from the past? Mm -hmm. Why don't we think that way? Well, we're not taught to think that way. Yeah, you know, we're taught to think in a very mechano mechanical way, and or you know, we go to school for years and we're learning this thing, that thing, that thing, that thing, and as if we're like these robots. But we're not taught to actually connect with our bodies um, and with things that matter, like our emotions, for example. Most people are really inept when it comes to 
um, understanding and dealing with their emotions. A lot of people, I wouldn't even say just men, although I know men have this uh, <laughs> sort of shadow upon them. Like, I don't, we're not emotional. We don't know how to emote. But there's a lot of women in the world who don't either. Most humans don't understand that even emotions are energetic messages within them. So if we're not taught this, if we're taught to ignore, or to stuff things down, or like, yeah, my back hurts, but I got to go to work, or I'm just going to keep ignoring all the time, then we're never developing the awareness of the subtleties in our bodies. I mean, your body is always talking to you, but most people are not able to hear because we're not taught that. And we spend a lot of time in mental spaces up here in our minds, thinking about the future, worrying about the past, yeah. right? Or the tasks I gotta do. When in your day you're just sitting to feel what's going on inside of your body. Like mm -hmm. right now, I'm aware of the feeling of my feet on this couch and what my lower back is supported by the pillow and what the temperature of the air feels like on my skin but I'm making a conscious effort to be aware of that. Most people are not. Yeah. And so we have to learn to connect with the body. And emotions are a big piece. Um, and most people think they're inconvenient or inappropriate <laughs> or I don't know what to do with that. So I will, we'll stuff it away and never really feel it, except that it always comes back. If you don't feel an emotion, it's going to show up in physical illness, guaranteed at some point. Um, but it's really in this learning that this body that we inhabit is a, a miracle of bioelectromagnetic consciousness. I don't even know where it all came from. Mm -hmm. But that's like the, the wisdom of our body most of us are not tapped into because we're not taught that. Yeah. I like that. If you don't feel an emotion, it's going to show up as a disease it in will. the body at some point. Uh, guaranteed, right? So mm -hmm. it's it's we 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 have to sort of bring awareness that in in your experience, how does a emotion that is not expressed through life, how does that manifest as physical tangible disease? Mm -hmm. Is an emotion just energy? Mm -hmm. Well, emotion is energy, energy in motion, right? Emotion, but we are also just energy. But something about our experience creates a physical body, right? And we have this experience of a nervous system and all and all of that, right? That's what this human experience is to be in a 3D body. When we have an emotional experience, right? It's a response to some energetic outside of you, right? So let's say, for example, uh, your partner breaks up with you, okay? <laughs> you have this like emotional response to it because it's your body's field reacting to something that's happened out there. I'm supposed to feel it. This is part of being a human. What is it showing me? Oh, it's showing me that I have sadness or I'm feeling sadness or that, you know, there's grief in this loss or whatever it is. That's the human experience. But most people don't sit with that and just be with it. If we would just let our emotions happen and be experienced, <laughs> they would be done. Uh -huh. You watch little kids do it all the time. Three-year-olds run around and throw temper tantrums and they're done. Yeah. Or they start giggling and laughing and then the next minute they're doing something different. Well, what is that that a child is doing that adults really aren't? Well, they're just in the present moment feeling the things as they happen. So if you brought this childlike awareness to life, it'd be really different, but we don't. <laughs> so instead, it's inconvenient that I have this feeling of maybe feeling betrayed or whatever, and I, I got to work or I got to go do something or take care of my kids or whatever. And now there's some tightness that happens. I'm going to stuff it in. I'm mm. going to put it somewhere else. Now, we're not consciously saying, let me go put it into my liver. Yeah. But it, that energy has got to get stored somewhere in the body. And it does. Uh, and then when enough energy <laughs> stays in a particular area for a period of time, uh, so actually, I, I use the uh, example of lungs and uh, like lung cancer. Grief is actually one of the emotions that tends to sit in the lungs and in the chest. Um, people actually talk about dying from a broken heart. And this is real. People actually can have such pain, uh, separation in love, that kind of thing, where they separate themselves from love, that actually their physical heart starts to break down and maybe they'll have cardiac issues or mm -hmm. whatever. But it first starts energetically. And if we that emotion gets stored somewhere, 
eventually something's going to happen. Interestingly, in the work that I do and what I see very often uh, is that anger uh, is actually the root of cancer. Mm. And so what is this really showing you that lots of people are walking around this planet angry and not feeling that right. emotion. And because of that, it eats at you, literally. Anger does that and it'll create some experience of cancer in the body. Now, what is the experience from a conscious perspective? If you're experiencing cancer, I say it that way, right? If this is something that's happening in your body, your body's telling you, you know, you're angry <laughs> or there's something you haven't processed or healed. And yeah, this isn't working physically the way it should because there's something misaligned. There's something you're thinking or feeling that is not aligned with your truth. Can you see it? because I'm waving a red flag <laughs> and then can you shift it? And I see it in my clients where then when they become aware of these patterns, these things, they'll shift. Mm. I have a client who, not just one, but this was a really great example, in one QHHT session with me, um, she received, she had lung cancer and um, like nodules on her thyroid. And what she learned in the session was that she had was feeling suffocated by her husband and uh, feeling like she couldn't express herself, mostly. There were other areas of life, but there's that. And the other thing she learned from her subconscious, which I can share more about what that looks like, but was that she needed to be cared for. She spent her whole life being a caretaker for yeah. others. And so this experience showed up in her body. She was aware of it. She knew it. She received a little, some information too about how to deal with this. Like, do this, do this. Yes, go to your doctor, go do this thing. But no, you don't need to cut out anything of your body. Just follow these things. And within three months, her tumor was down to like 5% of what it was. And mm -hmm. within six months, she's in remission. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, she yeah. did the work. Yeah. Right? It wasn't just, oh, I found out and moved on. And like, I did some crazy voodoo on her. Nothing happened. Yeah. <laughs> anything like that. But it was an experience of bringing consciousness like, oh, this is what's happening. How do I make a conscious shift in my life? And then her body responded to it. It's beautiful because um, it, it takes that awareness and following through with that awareness, like you said, doing the work mm -hmm. over time, you have to embody that new self. I've worked in cancer, man. I'd, I'd seen two years, probably 2,000 cancer patients. And the cancer patients that were in remission the ones that had miracle healings, as opposed to the ones who had reoccurrence of cancer, those are the people who had a new sense of self completely. There, there is no version of them except maybe their personality and their memories, but there's a new embodied version of them that exists. That old version before cancer is completely different. And these are the people who they've cut out, maybe they got divorced, they let go of the people in their lives, they let go of the job. These are the people who have a new relationship with nature, with themselves. And I always, it always stuck out to me. I was like, well, 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 I started writing down, like, what's this person have that they, what about this person? And that was the commonality I saw. I was like, now they're different, you know? And I would ask questions about how were you before cancer and how are you now? Mm -hmm. And I bet if you were to go back and if they, they weren't aware at the time, I'm sure that's why they experienced cancer. Right. But if you were to go back and look at their life, they were receiving messages long before that about needing to change something in their life or change a self, right? right? Which you were talking about. Right. I also love that you use the word miracles because miracles are very normal. Mm -hmm. We make them think they're these like woo woo crazy things, but actually amazing things are happening around us all the time. And, you know, if you're seeking to heal yourself, or whatever, a miracle is something that's very normal happening around you all the time. Yeah. And, and even medically. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have to understand that when we get our, out of our own way, we can let the body heal itself. Um, there's beautiful physical interventions we can do, but, but ultimately it's more upstream. We're talking about the emotional, spiritual connection, the connection to self as, as we, we, we can go, to, go into. But when that changes, this is a lot of the time, those blocks, the things we're holding in that start moving. What is, what is that quantum hyp hypnosis, the, the QHH you said? Stress is a common factor that affects everyone in today's fast paced world. And you know, it leads to various issues. What if the answer to a better stress response is actually in a key nutrient? I'm talking about magnesium breakthrough by Bioptimizers. This is a one of a kind product that is designed to reverse low levels of magnesium, which a lot of you have, 70% of you, which could be causing a multitude of other health problems. What sets magnesium breakthrough apart is its ability to support healthy levels of stress hormones like cortisol, a better balance 
solid stress response in your nervous and hormonal systems. A healthy production of GABA. This is the relaxing neurotransmitter to our nervous system. It relaxes us, especially before bed, but even during the day, we'll relax our bodies, leading to a more peaceful and better flow state. This means that the supplement acts like a break on your body's nervous system, helping to calm and soothe and promote a better quality of life. But you gotta get your hands on the right type of magnesium. The truth is most magnesium supplements you'll find in health food stores only use the cheapest synthetic forms of magnesium. And since they're not full spectrum, it will not help your magnesium deficiency and do much to support your health. There are actually seven key forms of magnesium and you must get all of them if you wanna experience all the calming stress balancing effects. This is why. I love Magnesium Breakthrough by Bioptimizers. It's the only organic full spectrum magnesium supplement that includes seven unique forms of magnesium for stress, resilience, and better sleep. All in one bottle. To check it out, go to www.bioptimizers.com slash DRG and use the promo code DRG10 to get 10% off of any order. That's B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S dot com slash DRG with the code DRG10 for 10% off of any order. When it comes to overall health, a little daily habit that can make a huge difference is flossing. And flossing seems like a minor thing, but taking good care of your teeth and gums does way more than prevent cavities and bad breath. Now, emerging research shows they can actually support your whole body health. It may even prevent cognitive decline as we age, that's wild. But I'm really pumped to tell you about an awesome new company called Slate. They have a game-changing three-in-one electric flosser. I use it every single night. It's the only product that flosses your teeth, massages your gums, and even scrapes your tongue to remove bacteria and promote fresher breath. I use it for about a month and a half. I love it. It goes in between the teeth and provides 12,000 sonic vibrations per minute. So it is cleaning and sweeping the gums. And remember, for gum health, you want circulation. You want healthy blood flow. So Slate makes flossing fun, effective, and efficient. So start one of your easiest and healthy daily habits with the Slate Electric Flosser. Go to slateflosser.com and use the code DRG to get 10% off of your very own flosser. That is 10% off of your easy to use Slate Electric Flosser at S-L-A-T-E-F-L-O-S-S-E-R.com and the code is DRG. Yeah, Q-H-H-T, quantum healing hypnosis technique it's a technique uh, of hypnosis that was created by dolores cannon and you can think about it as this opportunity to connect with past lives your subconscious and your higher self and so you can think about and these sessions are all different because everybody's reason for showing up and what your higher self wants to show you whatever is always different so it's always got me a not on edge, but I've got to be nimble in the sessions, but essentially you're guided into a um, state of hypnosis. And then we start to see what emerges, but generally it begins in a past life regression. And so for people who are like, wait a second, past life regression, I don't know about that. Now Mm -hmm. you're talking about past lives. Well, look, we're not beings that showed up to this life once. (laughs) We carry things within us in our lifetimes. And in a past life regression, we can get a glimpse at what those things were. Now, whether you believe in a past life or not, I'm gonna speak to people who are like, well, I've I've checked out of this conversation now. (laughs) Whether you believe um, that you've lived thousands of past lives or that something is real or not real, you have information stored in you, in your DNA and in your subconscious. So I talk to my clients about this too, and they're like, I don't know if I wanna see a past life. I don't know if I believe it. I'm like, great, you don't need to believe it. Something's gonna come up for you to see. Now, whether it's an idea, an imagination, a real past life, a vision, what does it matter how real it is if it is showing you an energetic that you need to see? Much like do you wake up in the evening or in the morning after a dream and go, oh, that dream was really fake. I can't believe I had that. No, it was showing you something, right? So the point I'm trying to make it is um, wherever it comes from, don't even worry about it, but information comes through. Uh, some sort of energetic experience. So maybe you'll learn, um, well, I'll share about my own. I've actually seen my past lives, several of them, uh, in some in session, but actually in Shavasana and yoga, sometimes just in meditation. And I've mm-hmm. even seen one just walking along the beach, like boom, this idea and this image comes to my mind. But I've had a lot of past lives as a priest, priest, monk, yogi, right? This kind of like, vibe and you're experiencing me that way i'm sure because that's in my energy (laughs) but so many of my own patterns that i've had to heal in this life come from those lives it's like when i walk into a catholic church for example Mm. (laughs) i feel things that are 
so deeply resonant in me that I can't describe in any other way. Mm. It's like, oh yeah, I've spent a lot of time. I mean, I have spent a lot of time in the church in this life, but in other lives too. There's like this deep resonance. When I went to um, Greece this past summer, for example, I'm walking around Athens going, oh my God, like I know I've been here before. Yeah. Like I've seen this before. I've felt this before. So this is kind of part one of QHHG, is this exploration of past lives or other aspects of yourself, if you want to call it that. The next part is um, inviting your higher self, or as Dolores Cannon spoke about it, your subconscious to come and share wisdom with you. So this is a part where I have questions and we're at a deep enough part of hypnosis now yeah, yeah. where somebody's able to talk to the subconscious and I'm asking questions of them, the questions that you had when you came into your session. You want to know about this, you want to know about this, you want to know about this, and it's being channeled directly through you. Those experiences are incredible on this side. I mean, they're incredible for somebody who's experiencing it, but for me, because I, when I'm speaking to somebody's subconscious, it's not the same at all. Their energy field is different. Their personality maybe kind of takes a little bit of a step away. Um, the message comes through with great clarity um, and simplicity, right? It's like, um, well, you know, why, why is she suffering from eczema, for example? That's related to touch. Um, she needs to feel hugged. Mm. She needs to feel like touched by someone. And their skin is showing her that, right? And you're like, wow. That makes sense. <laughs> it right? that, that makes so much intuitive mm -hmm. sense. I've learned from these sessions that actually when we start to connect with our bodies, it's way simpler than we even think. And so, you know, when the subconscious comes through, giving that information, it can be extremely powerful. But the other piece, and this is the healing component of these sessions, is that while I'm speaking to the subconscious, while we're working, the energy of that person's higher self is moving through them. And I can request, if it's of their highest, of course, um, to send light, to send energy, to send healing to any particular area that is kind of showing up. We begin kind of with a body scan at that point tell me while this person is laying here, like what areas of your body are you being drawn to this? And um, it's not happening from me, but it's hap it's being guided through yeah. a conversation, but it is really happening through the client. It's really amazing. Oh, amazing, man. I, it, you know, you, you, you touched on the simplicity right here of, you know, it's sort of like when we look at disease or what's coming up or or even just mental there's an answer that is more intuitive than everything we've ever written in medical textbooks, right? Because if you talk about eczema now, we could start talking about the immune system and how it's reacting and certain foods and maybe this, that. Oh, wait, but what about just being touched? Mm -hmm. Wait, hold on. Wait, well, what, what is it? It can't be that simple, you know? But talking? it is. You know, babies in a NICU need to be touched. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise they die. Otherwise they die. Yeah. Well, it, so do other grown humans <laughs> so so do, so do we i mean we, yeah. we we are wanting love and 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 being seen and being heard right we, it's, that's all we want all mm -hmm. of us just want more love so beautiful i mean i i'm look this is my first time i'm here in this uh wonderful practice but really anything that gets you into away from the ego and into the body letting the subconscious higher self flow is is amazing and i loved hearing about your past life uh, as a knowing that you were in the religious sector or, no, or, or sure. spiritual sect, always so many, <laughs> so many lives. <laughs> you know, it was pretty cool. Every time I I do psychedelics, I always see everything in um, Art Deco. Mm -hmm. Everything is in Art Deco. And uh, when I did ayahuasca years ago, I was in front of a mirror, but I didn't see my face. But I saw like the light bulbs, and I was like, oh, I think I was like a showgirl. Mm -hmm. I think I was like mm -hmm. a like a Art Deco performer. Who, 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 and, and there was, I just, music was like, it just, I always hear music too when it's, I'm like, uh, this is not my life for sure. This is something else. So I didn't believe in past lives until then. I believe we reincarnate, but I didn't think you could like touch on it. Yeah. Oh, but we can, we, we all can. We all can. You, and you mentioned we carry some stuff from past lives. What does that mean? Yeah. So, you know, I'll speak, I'll be specific to me, but we can, literally carry experiences within us in our DNA that from whether they be past lives or maybe our ancestors even, right? Our DNA is holding information. It's literally what it is, right? A store of information. 
And so we might carry a pattern within us. For example, I have a fear of water, of drowning. It's actually something that my parents as well, but um, like fear of drowning and I don't swim. Even though when I lived in Hawaii, I spent a lot of time in the water and I really yeah. did a lot of work around this, but still have this fear of drowning. But it doesn't really make sense in the sense that there hasn't been a moment in this life where like I could point to fear of drowning or another one, actually a bigger one. Anybody who knows me will listen to this. Um, I have like a visceral reaction to fire alarms, like hate it, like really uncomfortable. In fact, my first fire drill when I was a teacher, when I was a kid in school, I used to cry like crazy. I used to grab all my stuff and mm -hmm. think I was dying, I guess. And my first fire drill as a teacher, I literally, it was the second day of school. I'm at the front of the room talking to these kids. The alarm goes off and I bounce. Mm -hmm. I ran right out of the building. You are, we're done. And I was yeah. like, what the heck is this? It was a trauma response. Yeah. But in this life, I don't have things to point to, to say, yeah, yeah, that was the time, that was the moment that that trauma got implanted in me. No, but I still carry that anyway. And I have seen now through my own work, like, oh yeah, I've actually seen a life where I died in a fire. Okay, well, that would kind of make sense here or that I have been drowned um, or a lot of people that come see me, uh, a past life version that happens often, um, which like being burned or mm -hmm. being hung or something. Those lives are always interesting because a lot of them have bags over their heads. So it's hard for them to describe what's wow. going on. <laughs> they can't see anything. But anyway, the point is, um, that's carried within me and it's affecting me in my life, whether I'm aware of it or not. But if I can bring consciousness to it, it's like, okay, yeah. And you might be able to think in your own life, like, yeah, what is that fear? What is that thing? Every time this trigger happens, I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. I don't know where this is coming from. Now it might be yours. It might be from a past life, but also you inherited genetics from, well, two people, but a line of you know, what's exponential, mm. thousands and thousands and thousands of people, all of their trauma, their wars, their divorces, their diseases, their fears. And that's all inside of you too. Crazy. Yeah. Because, we, we, you know, we, we just think about this life as our uh, example of what's happening, right? Like this is cause and effect. What did I do in this life? We sort of, we know about generational stuff, but like we don't really look at it mm. going, no, you, you're carrying like your grandfather's, your grandmother's crap. And, um, well, in the field of epigenetics, I think is just incredibly yeah. interesting in this space and like really starting to, to understand that, yeah, there's something else. I mean, look, I am not an anti-science person by any means. I literally have a PhD I've studied. <laughs> I mean, I know how to do scientific research. I think the biggest strides that humanity will make in the future, or another way of saying it is that they need to make, that we need to make is this when we can blend what we know about science and technology with consciousness and spirituality. Look, if my bone is sticking out of my leg, I sure hope there's somebody in the ER who can go stitch that up. I'm not against science and you give me what I need and you, know, you stitch it up and all of that. But when we can take what we know from hundreds of years of research and, you know, practice medically, right? And then marry it with consciousness and what the yogis and the ancient mystics have taught us about our existence for thousands of years. When we marry those two, oh my God, human existence will look so different, radically different. Uh, are we going that way? I think so. I think this conversation is an example of that. For sure. Uh, when, when you talk about consciousness, spirituality, it's a lot less tangible, right? Like we can't just measure soul or we can't measure that which we don't see, the quantum. Mm. We're trying to with physics, but like what? how heavily implicated is it in, in healing from diseases, being connected to this world? Oh my God, it's everything. It's, everything. it's interesting. I, I really got kind of hung up on the question of measurement, which is interesting because it's the scientific question, right? I mean... I did a, my doctoral dissertation. I had to measure people's responses. It was a qualitative research paper, but so it wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, quant heavy numbers, but I still had to measure certain responses and things like that. And it's interesting when we start talking about consciousness because we are talking about non physical and oftentimes not visual, perhaps. 
But the tools that we have been using for scientific discovery, we'll say of measurement of like this device can tell me this, that kind of thing, they don't work necessarily, or they don't work yet because we haven't designed the right things yet because we haven't been asking the right questions yet. Um, but of course that it's, um, it's just a little bit beyond what we've understood is the scientific method in the past, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Mm. It's there. And you can measure, I'm thinking, I'm literally hearing my, my spiritual teachers I work with in my head where we actually do measure certain things like, uh, the amount of light that a person carries, which I know can sound woo woo. And like, we don't have a tool. We do have tools for that actually. Um, which is, that's a thing. It's a whole new sort of realm, but we can measure those things, but not in the same way. Mm -hmm. And if we're talking about connecting spiritually with yourself, right? If I were to say to you, you know, how do you receive guidance from your higher self? Or how do you know this message from your body is telling you this? You have to learn to listen in a different way, right? I know that if I'm in meditation and I'm feeling something going on in this area, right? My stomach, I'm pointing to. Um, that something's off. I know that my gut is telling me something. Yeah. Something isn't correct. But I know that because I'm familiar with listening to it and watching it show up in my reality. So this is like the physical or can we measure it part. Actually, yes, we are talking about non-physical, but it's all being shown to us in the physical as well. On my way here, for example... And this isn't just wishful thinking. This happens to me a lot. But on my way here, I got stuck at an intersection for a very long time mm. in traffic. And then there was a bus that got in front of me. And I was like, okay. And I knew I was going to be late. And I was like, all right, well, this must be for some reason. And I trust that I'm being guided for sure, that there was an accident I avoided or something happened. Now, do I know that for sure? Maybe not in this instance, but I have seen things in the past like that where it's like, oh, I did know this and I did feel this and then it showed up and there it is. Um, so in some ways, in many ways we can measure, but not with the same tools, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So more importantly then, until we ask the right questions and develop the right tools, mm -hmm. more importantly then is having a way to listen to your own specific indicators, markers from the body saying, hey, you're off. Something's happening, totally. something you're being, doing, saying, having is off. Skincare isn't just about looking good. It's not about just having a glowing skin, although everybody wants that glowing skin. It's about really nurturing your skin, especially coming from the inside out, and that's where well-being is. In a world that's flooded with skincare products with a lot of harsh chemicals, right? Just go to your local mall or local popular website. You're going to find a lot of nasty chemicals in these popular brands. But finding something truly effective and safe almost can feel impossible. Alitura Naturals is a game changer. They have accolades for eco-conscious and clean beauty. Alitura Naturals has crafted a serum that's not only safe, but incredibly effective. Their gold serum isn't just another skincare product. It's a testament to the power of natural healing and the commitment to holistic health. They got organic ingredients like jojoba, olive, and rosehip oils. And the gold serum is made organically with plant-derived vitamin A, GHKCU, and marine collagen to revitalize the skin. Alitura has been using the best ingredients in their products for years, pioneering the path of what truly transformed skincare can be. But if you want to get that skin glow and want to get a quality product that has gotten rid of all those nasty chemicals and come from a place of transparency and efficacy, go get yourself a Alitura. For you, the Heal Thyself listener, you get an exclusive discount. Go to alitura.com, A-L-I-T-U-R-A.com and use the code DRG at checkout for 20% off. Well, and this is our connection now. I'm remembering what you were also asking, our connection to the quantum. So we talk about the quantum field and, you know, quantum physicists are telling us a lot of things about the nature of reality that seem a little bit weird mm -hmm. or like anti what the scientific establishment knows. And yet the yogis and the mystics throughout all of history have said very similar things, right? Huh. <laughs> so there's something for us to sort of look at here and we are quantum bioelectromagnetic beings we are we're tapped into quantum realms mm -hmm. now whether you're conscious of it or not that's fine right most humans are not we think that things just happen and we're victims of yeah. something happening but if you think about like the topic of manifestation for example the topic of um spells those are all real. This is all intending energy <laughs> in particular directions. When we say that I'm sending love and light or 
when you're really angry at someone and sending hatred towards them. This is real because you're we're all connected in a quantum reality that is not physical and we can't see it with our 3D eyes. We can see it with our third eye or, or others, mm -hmm. right? But to know enough that it exists is a big deal. And we're connected in part of that. Mm. But our body is the conduit, I guess is the point. That, all that information, all of that unseen, all of the universe, if you want to call it that, whatever, we translate that through the body, which is why our body is so important. And actually, even in spiritual circles, you know, it can be really a common thing to hear about enlightenment and, you know, this and, or for your example, not a criticism, but just like I was on this trip and yeah. I saw this, right? There's a lot of wanting to come out of the body to somehow ascend or become spiritual or like, I'm going to be enlightened and come out of, no. You actually are a soul that chose to come in a body and have the experience of the body. This is the mechanism that helps us to understand the quantum world and our reality. So all the more reason why we need to learn about it and pay attention to it. Yeah, we need to learn how to be more in our body and embodied mm -hmm. versus trying to chase all of these things that will hopefully have us realize that, you know, what we're here to do or why we're here to do it. Is really just connecting back to, to to self, which which is all the stuff that is like we've been saying for a while. Like you need to stop, you need to be, you need to connect with your body, you need to connect with your spirit. You gotta you gotta meditate, whatever it is that gets you to to just move away from the ego. Um, and it's natural. And it's natural. It's natural. Shoot, it's, it's the free. easiest it's thing to do. Too. You literally just have to sit there. Yeah, it's free. <laughs> it's free and natural. You mean? Oh, what do we have to do? We just have to sit there and get off of our phones, mm -hmm. take some time to ourselves, stop doing. Why are we so addicted to doing? <laughs> well, in the way that I said earlier, we weren't trained to connect with our bodies and our emotions. We're trained to do. We live in this uh, society that is about achievement, that is about success, that is about going to work in this whole rat race situation. And we're not taught to be. The simplest thing is to be, yeah. to sit with your breath, to sit in this moment, to feel what's happening around me or even inside of me, for goodness sake, right? Most of the time our focus, our attention is outward, away from me, other people, other things. Um, yeah, except we have to remember that we're not human doings. We are human beings. And there's, there's really uh, an important distinction there because in this world of AI where people are like, oh my God, all these machines are going to take away our jobs or whatever. Yeah, well, probably, but maybe they also should. <laughs> Why are you doing it all at all? What does it mean to be a human being, right? The gifts of intuition, the gifts of empathy, the gifts of, you know, creativity. Machines don't do that, but human beings do. Mm -hmm. Take away our jobs and bring us back to being, yeah. right? Give so me a bunch can... of time to just hang out and talk to you. Right. So, <laughs> and, we, and, and with those things, we start coming out our, ourselves, our true authentic selves, our, our purpose, you know, why why we why we're here, how we're supposed to serve other people, those things come out when we have that time. I mean, you don't know how many people, maybe, maybe five in the past few years that I've known personally who have lost their jobs, especially around COVID, mm -hmm. and come back to the workforce completely different with what they were doing, completely different what their major was, and happy, and happy because they're more connected to themselves. They're serving people, serving humanity. And I know you work a lot with purpose. How do we find our purpose of why we're here and what we're supposed to do with our time mm -hmm. well first your intent to do that to make that a focus for you is number one but the point you're kind of making there is time you need to make time for that i believe that our world is set up in such a way that people are so busy intentionally because if you want to evolve spiritually if you want to grow spiritually if you want to know yourself you need time to do that. It's not going to happen going to one yoga class once a week. It's beautiful if that's what you're doing. And I'm super happy that, that that's the mm -hmm. case, but it's not. Most people, I mean, we all, all of humans had some experience in 2020 and 21, for, but a lot of people had a lot of like free time or a lot of downtime or like I wasn't traveling all the time or I wasn't going to work all the time or I got laid off. So I had nothing but time, right? And if you want to spiritually evolve, you need that. You need the space to feel, to think, to reflect, to recognize like, oh, wow, look at this pattern I'm 
I'm engaging with with my partner. I don't know what that is, but I'm just going to sit with myself, right? If you're too busy, you can't do that. You don't even have the time. <laughs> you don't have the time, but you can't turn your attention inward, right? So you need space, number one. Um, so if you want to evolve spiritually, you've got to create space. And for mm -hmm. some people, that looks like running up onto a mountain for a few years. For others, it means quitting the nine to five that they hate for an entrepreneurial or not working at all. I don't know. Right. That's kind of required. But for everyone, is that possible? Not necessarily. If I don't have time and space in my life, will I never figure out my purpose? Of course not. You know, sometimes you do have to work to support a family or yeah. whatever. But um, really, the keys. So I talk about three sort of keys to discovering your purpose. The first is knowing why you're here. Why did you really come here? And for me, this is where the practice of astrology comes. I am a practicing astrologer, helping people to understand at a soul level why they incarnated. What was the purpose point of your life? What did you want to learn? And what are you carrying with you? Second piece, when I'm clear about why I'm here, is what's holding me back from being that? And this is primarily the work of QHHT mm -hmm. that I talked about. What's in my subconscious? What's my limiting beliefs? What am What is holding me from um, being what I'm meant to be in the world? And then the third is learning to align with your higher self. You know, it's really great if you can go to a retreat, a weekend retreat or, you know, a week in Costa Rica or wherever, right? Those are great to do spiritual work. But oftentimes it becomes very challenging when you come back into your life. It's like, wait a second, how do I, that retreat, that ayahuasca ceremony, that thing was amazing, but like, how do I apply this? This is equally as important. Mm. Learning the tools of self-inquiry, of meditation and maybe of Kriya Yoga, whatever the tools are to really help you align with your higher self so that you're always receiving the guidance that you need and more importantly, that you can recognize it because we're all receiving the guidance all the time. We're like these big antenna, but most of us are tuned to the wrong channel. Yeah. Uh, and what a, what an easy, it's it, again, easy way to connect, right? It's not as hard as we think. A lot of us are like, I'm never going to find my purpose. Uh, you know, I, what is this life? But there's, we have accessibility to these type of things. And I, I love that you had mentioned the astrological piece because, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know much about it, but I know we, we were talking off air about Deborah Silverman. She was in here and she read my whole chart and I was like, this woman, how does she know me like this? Mm -hmm. And I was kind of playing it cool, but in the inside I was like, what the <laughs> hell's happening? You know, <laughs> like she knew stuff from my childhood. She knew uh, ways that I showed up as a kid, but also ways that I show up now. I'm like, who gave her the intel? Who on my team is the is the is the is the mole, right? Mm -hmm. But but the truth of the matter is, is that's when I had a major respect for it, you know, because I, I coming from science background, it's a science background, and you and you too, so we want the tangible. But sometimes, and I learned very quickly in life, health, purpose, wellness, reason is is sometimes not tangible. It's it's it goes right through your hand the moment you try to right. grab it. And I respect that. So, um, yeah, shout out to uh, astrologers out there who are doing that work too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, my first experience, I mean, my background was in education and I had an MBA and a master's in school leadership. I was planning to be a, a principal probably or a superintendent of schools. This yeah. was like the plan. And then I went in to engage in a leadership PhD. <laughs> and then that period of time was a real like, whoa, my life was a mess, yeah. to be frank. And that's when I first had my my very first astrology reading because somebody suggested, why don't you just have it? I was like, yo, I don't know. Like, yeah, I followed some stuff on Cafe Astrology and I've gone on a date and told somebody I was a Taurus before. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. where that's the, the that's conversation the starts. level of, of where it goes. Yeah. But I had a reading with um, someone and it was that kind of experience that you were talking about where, you know, she's looking very literally at symbols, it's extremely mathematical, by the way, and right. actually quite scientific. In mm -hmm. fact, you know, astrology and astronomy were one in the same for most of human history until the scientific revolution when that division happened. Mm -hmm. I digress. I wrote a whole dissertation on this, so I know quite a bit about the history of astrology. But anyway... My first experience was so profound that this woman is telling me stuff about myself that I have never even vocalized, right? Things that were within me that I was like, oh my God. How does she? Like, how does she, like she just touched it. And not like personality things, like deep, like, whoa, how did she hit that? And I remember for me, it was the most profound experience of feeling truly seen, right? Acknowledged as an 
you know, an inherently valuable being on this planet. And it was so profound for me that after that experience, I just kind of kept asking the questions like, well, what is this? And I started to study it, of course. Speaking about past lives, my experience was pretty much about unlocking stuff from past lives. I'm an academic for sure. I am a nerd. I can study stuff really fast. But the way I learned astrology was some next level, like, all of a sudden I would like, it would open up and I would able to see all kinds of things in somebody's chart. And I was like, whoa, what the heck is this? And then um, I just kind of followed that thread. I started doing readings and stuff, but I ended up writing my doctoral dissertation about the use of astrology as a tool for self-discovery. And Deborah Silverman was one of my participants. Amazing. So it was a That's beautiful the, circle. Full circle right there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, I, I remember she was hitting me with dates i was like what, what do you mean how do you know about 2015 you know or how do you know about those what and and i saw so i i I'm, I'm with you on that first moment when you you really hit that um i wanted to speak a little bit and you mentioned this about manifestation hmm. you, you could look we're in california man i mean like there's manifestation coaches and manifestation centers and yeah, you could probably go get a manifestation latte somewhere in this anyway city. <laughs> yeah there definitely is there definitely is for sure that's funny so uh, is it real? And if manifestation is real, are, is it the cliche ways that we're talking about? Are we doing it wrong? Mm. How do we really truly manifest in this world? Yeah, it's totally real, first of all. And <laughs> also kind of cliche in many ways. It's funny, it's, it, it's kind of analogous to this idea of astrology where there's this understanding of astrology that sounds like, oh, popular and fun and cute. And now I'm on a date and I'm, oh, don't go with that person. You know, there's that bit. And then, you know, in blogs online or videos, people yeah. are kind of, it's like a kitschy fun thing. But in reality, it's actually a deeply psychological tool that like if every therapist in the world knew how to read it, then we would have <laughs> huge breakthroughs in mental health. I could tell you that for sure. But most people don't realize the depth of that. In a similar way, I think manifestation is kind of like that. I almost feel like in the spiritual community or something, manifestation is like this gateway drug, sort of, if you will, where we're talking about something that is true, but people aren't understanding the depth of it, right? You are consciousness in a body. I've said this several times in this conversation. Your consciousness is always creating. I mean, literally, your physical body is being created by it. Your thoughts, your beliefs, your emotions create your energetic signature. And you will attract whatever it is that you're vibrating to. This is like also science. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, vibrations attract like and like, that kind of thing. And, you know, when we think of manifestation as like, I'm going to think about it and I'm going to visualize it. And because I really want it, it's going to happen. That could come from the ego, by the way. Um, and you can want something all you want, and you can dream about it all you want, and you can journal about it all you want. But if you've got an underlying belief in your subconscious mind that's saying, I don't deserve that, guess what? It's not showing up. Mm -hmm. It can't show up. And so, I mean, literally not possible for it to show up. And so when it comes to learning to manifest, I mean, we're always creating, we are creator beings. Our consciousness is doing that. But it's not as cute and trendy, I will say, as people are necessarily making it out to be. If Because if something is showing up in my reality, like a physical illness, like a conversation with yeah. a friend, right? There's something for me to learn and that's how manifesting is. Something is showing up as an expression of what's happening inside of you or because you need to see it mm -hmm. be to know what's happening inside of you, right? And I don't know that people quite get that, that there is something deeper happening. And what's happening in your subconscious, right? What you're not necessarily aware of, but is part of your frequency, your, your generational trauma, your belief systems about this, that, or the other thing. Yeah, I could I can visualize the mansion I want to live in. But look, if I don't actually believe that's possible, you can visualize it all you want and create every mood board you want and watch every Selling Sunset episode you want to get yourself in that. But if you don't believe that, you're deserving of it, it will not happen. Mm -mm. So it's about truly one understanding that the manifestation in front of you is something for you to learn. It's here for you, or it's a manifestation of internal yeah. you. Uh, but what a, what a gift that is then, because if you want that mansion and you keep attracting the opposite of that, 
then that's deeper work. Then you're going, totally. okay, wait, hold on, hold on. Maybe this is my belief system. There's Correct. something deep in me. There's a, I'm not good enough for X, Y, and Z to create that. Um, in many ways, it's like a compass then. Totally. If we look at, if we look at manifestation. Okay. So we don't really need the mood boards. We need the self-awareness more. Yeah. And now the mood board and the meditation and these kinds of things can help you to shift it. But ultimately it's all frequency. I mean, what is the human experience? This is a really magical thing. People forget. We don't know it. But we're these souls or light beings or whatever that come from some other place, whatever. We're put into a body and we're born and we have this experience. And everything that's happening externally is a reflection of what is happening internally always. So like you said, it could be the other way around. Something is showing you what's happening inside. It's showing up in your physical reality. But until you believe and get yourself in the frequency of, I can live in that mansion, right? In Beverly Hills or whatever. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. But if you do that work and you can actually rid yourself of the belief systems of poverty, of fear, of worry, of... A lot of people have beliefs about being rich. They don't even know that they're um, carrying that. Like, if I'm rich, I'm a terrible human. Oh, like, there's a lot of spiritual people who will. There's a lot of spiritual people who are dirt poor. Why is that? Because they're carrying a belief around money and wealth as dirty or dark. Well, guess what, my friend? Until that's dealt with, money can't show up for you, <laughs> right? So it's an internal thing. And what's happening externally is always showing us it's a compass, as you said. Powerful. So then how does that explain someone who experiences a bunch of trauma? Like experiences like, oh my God, you know, I got robbed two years ago. I got raped three years ago. This, this, and this happened. Is that manifestation or is it our soul calling for an experience? Is it the same thing? You know, are we victims? Well, it's both and definitely not victims. You know, we, it can feel a bit insensitive for me to say it like this, but I'm going to. All of those things are catalysts. They are gifts from the universe to show you something. Now, that might be hard and could feel insensitive or even insulting to those who have moved through trauma that's really challenging or difficult. So I recognize that. But... If you are experiencing something that is challenging, difficult, or hard, at some level, your soul signed up for this. There's a lesson that you need to move through, maybe heal, maybe move beyond. Maybe it's ancestral. Maybe it's from a past life. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's karmic. This idea of energy is always connected. So something you've done in other lives that you need to sort of pay back. This is real. Mm. Um, but regardless, all of those experiences are beautiful and they're gifts when you know that they are. You're like, okay, this moment for me is like really tough on my pocketbook and my bank account and I don't know what the heck this is. Ah, this must be something about my self-worth is teaching me this right now. Or, you know, if you're kicked out of your apartment or if you're breaking up with someone, the gift, the catalyst, whatever it is, is the gift. There's something for you to see and learn. Mm. And if you live your life that way, it's very different. Because you're not a victim. Correct. You're not a victim. What an empowered way. Totally. Because then we're, we're actively moving through life as, okay, hold on. There's something here that I need to experience for some reason. Let me tune in. Okay. And now I can move through this. Yeah. Well, and, and it, it, you know, a lot of people go, I want to manifest that mansion and not understanding that all of the blocks, all the negative things that are happening after you declare that is there for you so you can manifest that mansion, for example. Yeah. The but universe do, wants to give you whatever you want. It wants to. It really to. Is, doesn't care. It doesn't care. <laughs> it's like, you want a million dollars? The universe can show you a million or one. One dollar or a million dollars is no different. They don't care. Right. And, but and, they, and, the universe. Yeah, they, it, it, right? It doesn't it care. Does, it, yeah, but, but, but that's that's really important because a lot of us see negative as negative and, and it's of something else. The, the universe is benevolent in the sense of always wanting to move towards love, for example, right? Or like we, we, we want to move towards our unconditional expression of love and, and authentic expression of who we are in this human form. But if you said it, like the universe doesn't care. Like if, if you are afraid of falling down the steps when you're doing your Miss America pageant, it'll give you that experience. universe is going to give it, doesn't, give, doesn't, give, doesn't care if that's bad or good. It's very relative. It's not bad. Because it's not bad. It could be great. If you break great. your leg, maybe you decide to 
um, open up a, a school for orphan children that you wouldn't have done if you kept doing, if you were, yeah, still if doing, you kept doing right. <laughs> and we need to, okay, look, uh, man, I got a thousand questions, but we got no more time. And, um, but I want to, I want to, the audience and viewers and listeners to know where are we going to find you? Um, and, and what are some of your projects that, that, that we can look forward to? Yeah, totally. So the easiest way to find me would be my website, drcameronmartin.org. That's drcameronmartin.org, um, or yourpathandpurpose.com. You can find my work specifically about QHHT there. Um, and I got a lot of speaking coming up and I have a couple books coming out as well around, um, leadership and being and around using astrology to discover yourself. So those are on the horizon. I'm excited to see this unfold, man. Yeah. It's, I, I'm, I'm really excited to have someone speaking about astrology who has a PhD, right? Because unfortunately, a lot of us in this world are like astrology. Woo, no way. I'm not yeah. touching that. I didn't, I didn't want to have an astrologer on the show for so long. Glad like you did. That. Yeah, no, when that, <laughs> that, that's when it that's when it broke it. That was the official. Okay, now we're now we're talking about it all. Uh -huh. um, so really awesome. We're, we're going to follow up on you and your Instagram. Yeah. So path and purpose. Path and purpose. All right. Uh, whoa, that was good. And I and I'm really happy to 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 talk about the stuff that matters most to me in health, and to be able to talk about emotions and spirituality and consciousness and why we're here and things like manifesting, which we, which we don't even think about in the sense of deeper purpose, deeper reasons. And we just look at all the stuff that we see online and three ways to, it's just too much. Mm. So thank you for clearing it up and speaking from a place of, you know, grounded truth, like matter of fact, in truth. And it's, and it's really amazing. And uh, thank you for coming on the show, my man. Thank you for having me.